mean, they may kind of have to to keep it away from space at this point, don't they? I'm curious what they think Coco is going to play right here because odds are, see, they want to take away the Corky because that's going to make a double AD comp harder for CJ Entis, even if Arrow isn't that great on it, yeah. so that Coco can't play Ezreal. And at that point, you have to wonder really what Coco is going to play. Maybe Zareth, but I haven't been too impressed with his Zareth overall. So I think they, KT should definitely take the Corky right now. And CJ will have a hard time unless Coco decides to play some Ari or something like that. All right, well, Corky Morgana taken by KT. Morgana, a little bit of a flex pick. But I would imagine that's probably going bot. What do you think? Could be top. Hmm. I haven't noticed someday playing it in solo queue recently, but it is still a, a strong top pick if you know how to use it. So. I think that that might be a powerful option for them. At, at the least, you know, we haven't seen KT in a couple weeks now, so CJ doesn't know either if perhaps they've been practicing a lot with top lane Morgana or trying to vary their champion pools a little bit. Obviously, with that kind of downtime, it's an excellent opportunity for the teams that didn't go to Poland to uh, use to develop some new strategies because that's yeah. a very rare respite in the middle of the season. It's true. Looks like you might see that Jarvan picked up for Ambition. Uh, despite the nerf, he's been grabbed a lot by these Korean junglers. They don't seem to be too afraid of that lack of armor. And Space, looks like he might be picking up that Sivir. Yeah, I guess so. All right, interesting. It's like they, they have been a little bit motivated by IEM. We had Sivir yeah. fall off here pretty hard, although I don't think it was justified because I think her ult always makes her useful if you're a good team at team fighting. Agne hovering over that Zareth right now. They're really going hard after Coco's champion pool. Now, Coco has been playing Ari in solo queue, so this is a bit of a risk if they want to play the cast in it, but maybe they just don't think that's as much of a threat. And they lock in the Janna. They're definitely taking that Morg top. Yeah, and we should mention, too, we are on patch 5.4 now, so some of those nerfs have come in. So no more Cassidy, no more Vagar. And uh, Scion still banned, I believe. Yeah, banned here. Yep. And for those of you who don't know, ooh, maybe taking the double AD themselves. Nagme oh, has okay. been really good on Ezreal also, so that wouldn't be too much of a surprise. And going for the Nunu in the jungle with okay. the double AD. Very nice. I like what KT's doing right here. And that's one thing that we can say has been good about KT this entire season. They've had great big ban phases. Undoubtedly, this team has been given the tools to succeed. They have yep. just failed to do so. I like the Nunu pick as well because now we that Morg is still flex and we don't exactly know where it's going. Uh, taking Annie into Morgana Nunu would be really quite challenging for Madlife to actually hit any stuns considering he will be zoned out pretty heavily by absolute zero, meaning that he must have a flash. Yeah, I wonder if we're maybe going to see him switch that over to Leona possibly. I don't know. His Leona was pretty bad. It was. I like to think that was kind of an aberration. Maybe Thresh. I mean, Thresh is open, too. Madlife just hasn't been playing Thresh uh, this season, really. Yeah, it's sad because he used to be, you know, so good on these champions. And now it just seems like you hate to think of this champion as like a bad pick for him, but kind of is. And he's going to lock into Annie anyway. Coco will grab that Ari. It's especially problematic if this Morgana goes top because they can still take Janna. So they can take Janna Morgana now. And that means... There is just a ridiculous amount of disengage. Huge black shields coming in against the primarily magic damage composition of CJ. So if, if someday can play more top, taking a last pick Johnny here would be fantastic for this team composition. They have a lot of frontline zone. Now it looks like they're still going to send that Morgana top if they give fix to that Leona. He has played a great Leona in the past. Yeah, it's this is OK. I like the Janna better, personally, but if they want some engage, they don't really have to have engage because they're playing double AD. They can just kite all day and siege and force the enemy team to engage. So the Leona, not a big necessity, actually. But they may, well, we'll they may just lock it in anyway. Um, yep. I will say, Fixer has been good on Leona. And I did say prior to this that I do like it when KT <laughs> plays full engage. Well, you got what you wanted. Well, it's not the fullest of full engage. You got uh, some engage. Yeah, I did really get I wanted a Janna here just for that additional little bit of appeal for the back line. I think that would have been very good, especially against the Sivir-Annie combination that CJ is going to be running. 
So CJ running a pretty standard composition. They will be heavily engaging though. KT gonna have to figure out how to use this Leona in order to stay alive, but they have the Nunu and Morgana so for some pretty nice kiting. So Nagde and Arrow, will focus will be on them to see what they can do in this situation and how easily they can avoid death. Sure enough, well, CJ looking for a bit of redemption after that poor performance in Poland last week. And KT just looking to again play the spoiler and just improve over time. You know what's interesting is this is the first time we've seen a team besides Jin Air run Morgana Top in Korea. Oh, there have been a lot of other teams since Jin Air started running it around the world that have played Morgana Top, but right. just no other Korean team, very interestingly. So someday yeah. doing something very unpredictable, having used his time, hopefully wisely, as we will see how good he is, but. And he's using the. Uh cooking Morgana skin too. I don't know that actual name of that skin, but it's a cook one. Well, it's time guys. CJ versus KT game one. Let's get in the game. And here we go. Had a lot of fun at IM, but it's good to be home. CJ Antis versus KT Rolster. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. We have the two uh, combo name teams again. Enter Entus, you know, a combination of Entus or... <laughs> I give up, I'm going home. I need more sleep, see ya. Entertain and Us. KT a combination. <laughs> just Rollster, a combination of roller and coaster. Wow, this is how this day is gonna be. All right, this is just how it's gonna be today. All right, fine, sure. All right, now that we've established that. I'm just that. not going to say anything so you can maximize your number of mistakes. I prefer to cleanse you, cl just cleanse it out of your system. Thanks, I'm purging right now. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. <sighs> well, looks like we have some pretty aggressive lanes here. I'm curious if KT's going to go for this kill lane here against CJ because this isn't exactly ideal. We could see some very bloody situations depending on where the junglers choose to go. Sounds fine to me. And score, not really a new new player either. So KT actually bringing a lot of new stuff to the table right now. And Coco, yeah. we really haven't seen much of his Ari at the professional level, so they're trying something out as well. One wonders if he could play Ari, why he did not in Poland. But hmm. there you go. I have noticed that he has been playing a lot in solo queue. Oh, and uh, Nagne just trying to take that to deny. Oh, Nagne taking a lot of damage here, has to use that flash. I don't think that was worth it to uh, deny that XP boost for Shy. Uh, was, oh, boy. It was going to be an XP boost for uh, Oh, for uh, Coco, right. Cause, oh, because it was only two saplings, wasn't it? So Correct. it doesn't kill the minions, three kills them. Correct. Okay. And we do see Shy going after wolves right away actually so this is a really interesting adaptation because we do have the 1v1 in the top lane so he's going to clear that camp and teleport so what he did was he used his subsequent uh sapling in order to kill the wolves so that's oh, another right fun thing you can do mad life. Oh, look at mad that life. burst mad life getting low the ignite was used will it be enough oh not quite not quite but mad life out of biscuits already fixer taking some damage and that is the opposite of what cj wanted to see now both summoners were used on arrow. Fixer used his ignite. Flash still up for space, even though he did use his summoner heal there. So a lot of summoners used on both sides, but KT with a really, really hardcore start to this game. Yeah, and they can keep pushing their advantage here too, yeah. uh, considering the HP totals on CJ right now. Space does have a potion, so they need to get that out of him and see if they can even this up just a little bit. So Fixer could be going for a bit more harass at the present time. It's already used that potion now, so it's, it, it is gone. Very close battle, though. Yeah. Mad Life nearly just straight up giving up first blood. Yeah, wow, not a good start. For Mad Life and CJ here. It's been a little bit crazy overall, though with Nagne having to burn that flash early on. Yeah, I really like what we saw to Shy in this game, though. That is a very creative use of Maokai yeah. early in this game in a, not even a lane swap situation. So that is quite different, uh, almost like a pseudo-scion in, in a sense. And 
That's one of the things about Maokai these days is teams are figuring out what you can do with him at level one to get some pretty nice advantages in lane or help out your mid laner as we saw CJ attempt to do, even though Nagne ended up having to burn his flash. Well, I think just in general right now, we're seeing people use the uh, smaller jungle camps in really creative ways to get little lane boosts early on. Too, yeah, it's so. cool. It's really cool, actually. I like it. Yeah, adds a lot of depth. Because at the current time, you can really decide how much of an advantage you want to go for and what the level, the acceptable level of danger is, right? Yeah. Do you want to try and take a whole camp and then uh, maybe screw up your lane freeze if there's a lane swap? Or do you just want to take a small one and get there at the right like a little bit faster, but not with as much of an advantage. So there's a lot of tactical play right now. Obviously, KT could and should have, if they saw that Maokai, checked with the support and AD as well into that Raptor Pit early on so Nogme doesn't have to blow his flash. So that's a bit of a mistake from KT. Oh, Fixer misses his hit. Zenith Blade. Yeah, he's not going to be able to go in. And while I was talking, we did see Score doing a bit of counter jungling right there. Ambition hanging around the top side, but they have no idea Score is in Tri Brush right now. Yeah. Oh wow, he's just gonna come from behind too. Walking right in, Zenith Blade onto space right now. Gets a stun on the Mad Life though. He's a weaker one. Mad Life definitely going down first. Blood goes to Arrow. And that was about as clean as it could possibly be. Now, this is the first time in a long time, though, we have seen KT's duo lane win like this. This yeah. is not a winning matchup for them, by the way. And Score just gonna go ahead and be Nunu and Solo Dragon. He knows exactly where Ambition is. No wards. He had that Raptor buff as well from taking it from Ambition's pit. So Score doing a really good job in the jungle right now. Kind of running circles around Ambition, getting the getting the vision in. Now Fixer coming over to help as well. Well, we wondered how he was gonna be able to do on that Nunu, and I think the answer so far is pretty well. You know, I, I really like this champion for Score, and I'm a bit surprised he didn't play it sooner because Score is such a smart player. Um, and that's why he has this really high kill contribution. He knows where to be on the map. He was part of that very legendary KT Bullets team that had the, that amazing shot calling. And so I really feel this is, a, this is a more natural position for him than AD. And someday oh, Shai's shy. gonna get what solid. Okie dokie. Okay, so that just happened. Soloing a Maokai as Morgana. That is wow. really questionable right there. But someday, coming up with the big kills and CJ. I guess. They may be, they may be, I think they may be a bit tired from their trip. This is not looking typically like them. Yeah, that's. I mean, I don't a, even know why Shy would walk forward like that. Or. Or twist or advance in onto into the. Yeah. Yeah, he could have actually what in the world is that? avoided standing on the tormented soil simply by not pressing W on a Sunday right there. So that was just an extremely poor decision from Shy. Yeah, seriously, that was very bizarre. Someday, I mean, all Sunday really had to do is like press R and W himself right there. It wasn't even much of a challenge for him. So Shy really coming up short. Someday actually going for. Rod of Ages first, it would appear. Yep. Or maybe Righteous Glory, we'll see. The Righteous, <laughs> yes, righteous Glory The Morgana. Home Guard Righteous Glory engages with the Morgana ult. I could see it, yeah, sure. Just pop Black Shield on yourself and like, try to skill shot me, fools. Yep. I would laugh so hard if he does that. <laughs> One thing someday is good at doing is teleport, is teleport uh, Home Guard engages. It is so. true. You Shy. got your flash up, you can get in the middle of everything. Shy going to struggle mightily with the Scuttle Crab right now. <laughs> what is going on up in that top lane? I, I don't even know, man. Well, they know Score's in the jungle, but there's oh, no oh, Coco. Mission found him. There's a knockup. Score taking some damage. Yeah, but he's new new. He can't do anything to him. He's he going to wander bit. around being a jerk. That's well, what new new players do. They just wander around <laughs> being jerks. Yeah, you know it, new new players. Yeah. You're proud of it, in fact. Well, here we go. Deep invade from KT. Trying to take away this red buff. They will have no trouble in doing so. Score will gobble it up, and they'll head back to lane. So KT doing a good job of pressing their advantage. Look at all those deep wards going in after they have this huge, huge CS lead and the first blood and bottom. This game is pretty, pretty ridiculous so far. Coco in the mid lane. Not doing bad, though. Staying up in CS. Hasn't randomly died. <laughs> he's got that so going for him. So he's got that him. going for him, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wow. Well, if that's your standard, I guess Coco is beating it. And there is not a blue buff steal yep. coming in from Nagne. Coco doing a good job holding his own in lane. Yeah, he's kind of an island right now, too, because of how the rest of the team has been playing what Ambition has kind of been obligated to do, I suppose. 
Well, I mean, not like Ambition has been ganking or anything like that either, so. Yeah. Ambition really is like Cloud Templar. He just farms until six, and then he tries to gank people. There's very few attempts made before that happened. And he did, he did have some chances to lane gank here in bottom. Oh boy, space. Take some damage. There's an interesting trade. I really thought Fixer was going to go in there, but the stun is loaded up for Madlife. Madlife's not level six, though, so you really could engage on this. Well, Madlife is very close to getting six, however, so there is yeah. some concern. They have Pink Ward in the brush, though, so they're going to know that Ambition is going to be reluctant to walk in there. Oh, here Ambition's we go. Coming here. In. Ambition is here. Madlife getting a little bit low. Fixer flashes out of the combo, and Arrow backs away as well. Madlife nearly goes down, but KT not losing anybody to the counter engage from CJ. Well, they pulled out at the right time. Yes, Actually, Arrow and Fix are looking quite good today. This is, they should not be a 40 CS in this matchup. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you gotta think some of it's the, you know, I mean, the you, being tired. You have, you have Annie. First off, Sivir has a good time in lane against Corky. Shy. Oh, there's an ult, Shy flashes out of it. Easy summoner taken by KT. Sivir has a great time in lane versus Corky, and you have so you have a spell shield against Leona with Sivir, and you have Annie there for the hard engage. There is, there is no excuse for losing this lane like this. This is a really poor performance. Oh, here we go. The flash and arrow does get stunned. He uses his own flash to get away. And Madlife trying to make something happen there, and he was still level five too. That was just like a flash Q or flash W. I didn't quite see which one it was. Yeah, Q. Yeah. Either way. Not the big CC that you want to have. Well, they're doing what they can to stay alive in this game, but ultimately KT's about to hit a massive power spike and probably just roll them in terms of sieges. I mean, they're just a couple minutes out at this stage from starting to seriously put pressure on towers. And that's exactly what this top lane Morgana does. That's one of the reasons why she's so good is she can continue to chip your towers just by clearing minion waves so quickly with tormented soil. Okay. Oh, Space just gets caught, jumped on. There's the stun. Space will go ahead and flash to try to get him. But there we go, Solar Flare after the sun got Spell Shield. And Space is going to go down and score. Oh, nearly got out. And Ambition coming into a big cataclysm, gets a double kill. Madlife coming to try to lock up Fixer, gets a Q stun. And I think that's going to be a level six for Madlife soon against a level seven Fixer. There's another knock up. Wow, the Leona just won't die. There we go, finally, Ambition with the triple kill down in bot. Whoa. Uh, KT. Okay, then. They dove that without even having Arrow there, so they couldn't really follow up on the damage, so it made it very easy for Ambition to counter gank, considering that, that kill took so long to acquire. Yeah. But three kills, wow, a lot of damage out of the mid lane tower. Well, Coco just takes it. Yeah, Coco been doing a good job of playing really far up in that lane, and using the fact that Ezreal has very low wave clear pre-6 to make it happen. So let's look at that gank again. I mean, Arrow's just not even anywhere close. He has to Valk in at low HP. Score starts tanking the turret. And then, unfortunately for KT, Arrow actually got tower <laughs> aggro after that instead yep. of Fixer. And then Fixer just can't do anything anymore, gets stunned by Madlife. But yeah, really awkward dive from KT Rolster. And they get punished for it. Well, so that does uh, quite a bit in terms of evening things up gold-wise. Doesn't fix the, uh, actually it evened up the CF uh, CS deficit rather for space quite a bit too. Well, he's still really far behind. And he got a couple of assists right there, but one headed over to Arrow as well. So hard to say. And CJ is going to have some difficulty dealing with the tankiness of this new new in the late game also. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how Space plans to Whoa. auto attack right here. Into there big trouble. you go. And there's a Q. Coco flashes for that one. Ignite helped him pick that one up. A lot of weird solo kills in this game, actually. Yeah, no kidding. You don't see Ezreal die solo like that very often. Especially when he still had his lens up. Yeah. One would think he may have been able to use that if he got hit by Charm. So we'll have to go back and see how those events unfolded. In the meantime, CJ. We'll take the opportunity to go and take their first dragon of the game, tying it up at one to one. Yep, that's right. No, uh, 
No fight at all over that from KT. And Shai has managed to catch up in CS. He has his righteous glory now. I guess. I can't believe Arrow is winning in CS, though. This is so weird. Yeah. Maybe he just went into bot games and practiced CSing <laughs> over the last two weeks. Hey, you, you do what you got to do, man. I think it looked more like he went into that time chamber from Dragon Ball and just, like, got, like, a 50 years of training in, like, one hour. 50 years of CSing? Man, yep. that would be boring. You'd think it'd be higher than 129 in 14 <laughs> minutes, but, uh, you know, he's on his way. He's getting there. He's a couple more centuries or so. He's had, he's had a couple scraps in the bottom lane, though. Yeah, that's true. He's got his Trinity Force. He needs to get those Sork shoes fairly soon, I would imagine. And they're really going to be able to start pushing, so we'll see if they can make use of this timing. Nagne, pretty far away from getting a Trinity Force, however. Doesn't even start building. He went for the cooldown boots first instead, as we see him grab his blue. Yeah, and KT coming back down to the bot lane. Doesn't look like they'll be able to catch space oh, no, or anything like die. that. Oh, they are going to try. All right, well, here we go. Go through try. Space pops his ultimate to try to get away. Zenith Blade hits. There's the stun. Space in a lot of trouble. And that is a kill score. Picking up that one. All right, that one worked a little bit better. Yeah, because they actually all happen to be there this time, Doa. That's the key. Sure does if you want to dive. You Wait. should all. You should have your teammates Wait. with you. If you want to dive, you have to have your primary damage dealer there. I know. What? Nagne gets jumped on, gets out of that cataclysm with the arcane shift, dodges the charm, gets very low anyway. Mad life, the flash tippers. Oh, Mad life. I appreciate the bloodthirstiness. I appreciate what Mad life tried to do there, but it was just a bad idea. Mad life assumed actually that he had already used his cleanse right there. He I guess so. Yeah. Should not have flashed for that otherwise. But honestly. Dogna did a really good job of dodging skill shots in that engagement, uh, just easily sidestepping that charm uh, next to his turret and getting out of there and having the heads up wherewithal to use the cleanse afterwards. So I actually think that escape was really quite well played by Dogna in a situation where he probably should have died. It was. Do you feel like we're seeing a little bit too much desperation from Mad Life in his plays lately? You know, like he's yes. just trying too hard to yes. make those Mad Life plays. And just yes doesn't seem to be capable of making anymore. That's, well, that's why he, he just seems uncomfortable on engaged supports, that his judgment isn't quite there. Yeah. Or what it should be, whereas on these peel supports, his judgment seems to be a lot better, so. That's very odd. Meanwhile, up in the top line, things kind of going the way they've always gone, except for one moment in this game where Shai just died in one v one. Aside from that, it's been fairly standard. Yeah, KT needs to work on their vision control because right now there are a lot of deep wards going into their bottom side jungle, and they should know that considering that wards keep dying and the fact that they don't have a mid lane turret, it's been pushed back a lot. So they need to get score over there with a Raptor buff and start figuring this out. And they only have one pink down on the map as well, so it's a little bit sloppy vision control from KT. They have to put up a, a better defensive perimeter of these wards. And right as I say that, they get a couple. Yep. There we go. Much better. I'm going to clear out some of those wards. And Score's going to walk right into that one. KT and Arrow right there as well. Ambition's going to go in. Score turns around. There's the tippers onto him. Meanwhile, damage coming from Arrow from behind. Space is going to pop that out. Everyone dodges Solar Flare. Cataclysm used. There goes Leona. Now someday in a little bit of trouble. Double kill here for Space as CJ pushes ahead. Goodbye, Score. A triple kill now for Space. And will he make it a Quadra? Trying to use that Scrying Orb, but decides it's a bit too dangerous to go after Morgana and Corky. And I agree. KT happy with the triple. was so confused as to whether they were fighting that or not I guess. that CJ had the better flank teleport there from Shy and actually managed to pick up that triple. But Score flashed out after using his ultimate to zone. Meanwhile, Someday came in and was already inside the Cataclysm. As we can see what happens right here. So first off, Score, okay, he uses his he flashes out, then like stands around in a brush while Fixer goes in. Someday gets into that ult immediately, and then Score like Score does nothing for 90% of that fight before just dying to space. Yeah. When if there's a port come in, you you really have to commit to that. So 
pretty sloppy team fight there from KT, not knowing who was going in and whether they were going to be fighting that or not. So Fixer and Score not on the same page, and then someday paying for it too as a result of their indecision. It's dangerous though. I mean, they've given they've given Jarvin a triple. Now they gave Siver a triple. Uh, KT is really doing a lot to kind of hand CJ this game back. Yeah, I agree. And they're also not grouping right now when they have an opportunity to do so. There's another tower going down, so they'll just about even things up in terms of gold. Shy's going to get really scary, and Shy's going to be really difficult to kill this game until late and the blades come out. Yeah. I wonder what we're going to see around this dragon pit now. Both teams trying to get a bit of, vis a bit of uh, vision. And that dragon is up in about 10 now. Ambition will just sit around to kill this ward. Seems a bit dangerous. Nope, not going to get the final hit on that. Oh, going in. Score gets charmed. There's the Cataclysm, and that's a kill onto the jungler. Ambition with a kill there. Shy, meanwhile, gets locked up by that Dark Binding, and they're only going to push far enough to force KT to back away, and this should be potentially a dragon for CJ. Score just had no not done backup yet. right Siver there. Siveralt used. They're going to go after this blue buff as well. Arrow and Nagne, not a lot they can do to try to stop this one from happening with Shy potentially coming in from the back. And there we go, a blue buff, a kill, a dragon. CJ really coming back in this one, and they've gained themselves uh, quite a nice gold lead, actually, now. Yeah, really surprising. I think that yeah. while we have seen that improvement in KT's laning phase, generally speaking, they just, their decision making and coordination in team fights just hasn't been there, unfortunately for them, because otherwise, they really, they should be in a very comfortable position in this game right now after the big number of kills they picked up purely out of outplaying CJ in the laning phase. Well, you just don't often see a Morgana solo kill a Maokai in the top lane and then, you know, go on to lose that game. That just does not happen a lot. No. And Shy also is going for a really weird build right now that I'm not sure I agree with. He looks like he's going for Rod of Ages after Righteous Glory. He's not going to have any resists to deal with this large amount of poke damage that's coming out. And his rod's going to be, OK, there he goes. He's not doing that. He is changing one into a Glacial Shroud. OK. And we'll see. Looks like he his new plan is to go Righteous Glory, Shroud, and then uh, Cowl. So he's going to get the tier one items for resists. So that's fine. That's a fine build. I was worried there for a second, because normally you don't see it that pathing on those items. Oh. Someday. And the Dark Binding onto Ambition, they're going to try to chase him, but Ambition missing the QE combo. This turret still alive, but someday has a good amount of weight clear, of course, with this Morgana. No problem. Yeah, and they've been, Coco's been pushing this mid lane pretty far forward, and this has really given them a lot of control over KT's jungle that CJ has executed well. Well, yeah, Coco just basically killed the mid turret by himself, you know, was able to bully Ezreal out and then do enough damage to the turret that it went down very, very fast. Yeah, ambition coming out with the red buff in the end. KT again having some slight issues with their pink warding. And they finally get the tier one in the bottom side someday there to meet Shy as he tries to clear up these waves. Man, Coco really has played well this game. He's the reason why his team has been doing so well right here. Um, they're going to try to go in on to Someday here. Gets a little bit of damage with that Q. Someday pops the ultimate, but the kill ends up going to Coco before the Morgana ult goes off, I believe. And Shy doing a good job of blocking up Someday for the duration of that fight. Oh, Flash Timbers on to Arrow. There we go. That is a catch, but they used so much. Fixer coming in. Locking Mad Life up under turret aggro. He's going to go down. So Fixer with a nice equalizing play there. To take advantage of uh, everything that was used by CJ. So at yeah, least they traded one for one. CJ going up by 5,000 gold after just killing turret after turret. And KT not responding very well in terms of where they allocate their players to lanes. I mean, Fixer was standing in mid with Nagne while that went down huh. initially. So not sure what they expected here as there were three people on the top side with a lot of hard engage. Fixer needs to stay with players that are actually more likely to die as 
CJ tries to close out this game by going for those tier two turrets. Very unlikely that they would kill Nogne while he was standing in front of an inhibitor tower. It's kind of funny, actually, it was Ambition's Cataclysm that kept uh, Mad Life in there long enough for the turret to kill him, too. <laughs> Scumbag Ambition. Well, he's been. He's been helping to turn this one around. He capitalized on KT's overly aggressive dive earlier on to pick up those th first three kills, really, for CJ, and has been rolling ever since. Well, again, Had a slow start, though. Well, again, it's kind of more of a classic CJ mid and late game. You know, really strong team fighting and decision making after, you know, sometimes a rocky start. But usually not this rocky. Yeah, I, I think this is mostly a case of KT Rolster really playing well right out of the gates and then not at all responding appropriately and taking some pretty bad team fights against CJ. Well, Nagne is going full blue build this game, it looks like. Got that Iceborne gauntlet. He's going to go Blade next. Right. Well, and, yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly what he's going to do because in general, the team it's going to be pretty lacking in terms of damage. Someday finally getting that Zonia's Hourglass. I can certainly use it. CJ, though, they've got such good control over the map. They've got really good wards in the enemy jungle, ready to take this dragon. This would be their third, I believe, too, if yeah. they can take it in a minute. This is generally when we were talking about at the start of this cast when we were Discussing KT, I said I like them on these full engage comps a little bit better. Yeah. And I still stand by that. They just, they don't seem to have the patience to kite things out properly. And the Leona here, I don't think is doing them a lot of favors. If they had had the Janna, they may have been able to protect that back line just a little bit better. But generally speaking, I just think they look better with champions like Vi and Lissandra, Leona together. Of course, that Rumble banned this game, so it wasn't an option for someday. I mean, it was, it was amazing how hard Arrow and, and uh, Fixer won that bot lane, but you know, right after the laning phase more or less ended, then it was kind of that was kind of it. Yeah, it actually was amazing how hard yeah. they won that bot lane. However, space is caught up in terms of CS at this point. Yep. And CJ's warding has just been light years better than KT's this game. So KT really hasn't had a chance to get back in things. Yeah, they haven't really had a lot of wards on. They have, the enemy they, jungle. They have three pink wards right now, but they just aren't down on the map doing things. Dragon is live. Shy's waiting there for the home guard engage. Yep. CJ. Driving that dragon. Checked by the two shot barrage of Nagane, but CJ is uh, not going to even have to worry, worry about any fights going into this one. No contest from KT, and that's three dragons to one now, I believe, for CJ. Yep. Sure is, so. Yep. Very surprising turnaround from CJ, mostly thanks to the work that Coco did to get this tower down early. If, if they hadn't been able to kill that mid lane oh, tower, oh, there goes Coco. Over the wall, on the score, someday trying to protect, but he just can't get close enough for a safe ultimate. Has to flash away himself as well. Dark Binding doesn't connect, and CJ gonna chase this one a little bit farther, probably turn around to take that red buff instead. Yeah, there's just not a lot you can do if you get caught like that with Nunu, I mean. You're not, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> no, you're certainly not. All right, well, Shy just gonna continue split pushing. I'm impressed by this turnaround from CJ to hold on yeah. here in spite of well, their early laning phase issues. Seeing a game like this from both of these teams kind of makes me wonder if we're gonna see a 2-0 now for CJ, because if it's played the same way next game, I mean, I KT just hope KT varies their strategy. I hope they do go back to a more hard engage style. I think if they do that, they're going to be in better condition. Yeah. Does it mean that they're maybe not quite as strategically diverse as, as we might have thought they were? KT? Yeah. No, I, I think that they, they, they've they had their biggest success on these hard engage comps. I think they can do it. I think CJ had good bans in game one, though. Taking out the Lissandra and Rumble are two tools that KT has been willing to use, but KT can still go for Maokai and Leona. Play something a bit more Vi. These are These are champions that they can really use effectively to go all in, because KT is lacking in their decision-making about whether they go all in or not right now. And 
that would make that would clarify things for them and get the ball on the same page. Oh, trying to catch Noggin and Arrow, not able to do it. Coco actually flashed for that as well, too. They got a flash out of Arrow at least. Yep. So summoner for summoner, and, and to be fair, Corky obviously much more vulnerable without that flash than Ari is. I think Coco is doing a great job this game. He has yeah. really opened up the map for his team. Ambition playing well with the vision beyond that. KT yep. looking oh. for an angle on Shy. There's the speed boost. Yeah, could be a bit caught. Ah, oh, they miss the Zenith Blade. Shy pops us all just in case, but KT. I thought they were turning on the Baron for a second. I was like, what? No. But they just got the ward instead. Much safer. Nagbe should be afraid. Doesn't have the greatest vision right now. He could get charmed. Wow, and baited right into that one. Uh, Coco, though, blown up. Looks like CJ didn't have as many people there as they wanted to. Here comes Shy from the back, though. Gets onto everyone with that ult in space. Doing a lot of damage from the side, but is it enough? Space. Oh, they're going to jump on him anyway. Leona comes in. That's a kill for space anyway. Now he has to leave the fight, taking a bit too much damage. Ambition gets blown up. Shy is still there, and space is low. He needs to get out, and KT turned this one around big time. It looked for a moment like they were going to try to punish the dive onto uh, Mad Life there in River, but KT was ready to follow that one up. Really, both teams was odd. having some shot calling issues in these team fights as to whether they are committing to them or not. Because right there, Coco, they set up a nice bait for that kill, but Shy was. Nowhere to be found. If we look at Shy right now, he's still walking up from the jungle. They get themselves caught in a co uh, choke. And of course, Nogde, with that cleanse, able to get out of the charm that they set up for them. Space gets a lot of good autos in from the side right there with the ricochet, but nice flash from Fixer. And then watch Nogde right here, because he's going to get a really good ult that hits both Ambition. Oh, doesn't hit Ambition, hits Space though in the back. And that actually prevents Space from re-engaging and maybe cleaning that one up. Probably prevented Space from dying, too, that there was someone else hit before it hit him. Yeah. Otherwise, you would have taken that full damage from the True Shot Barrage. Yeah. Close call. Yeah. Does make it out. Blade now done onto Ezreal. Still no armor pen, though, so the Frozen Heart and Randuin is going to be quite difficult to deal with from Shy. Yeah. Uh, same thing. Well, Corky actually at least has the Last Whisper, so that'll be a little bit better for him someday going after the. Huh. Death cap at the moment. Now, was CJ spotted by that ward in mid just barely? I wonder. I think KT knows. I didn't see. CJ. KT still seems to be. The ping's going down from KT, so I think they have a pretty good idea that they're in there. We'll see. Fixer walks in, there's a ward, there's a stun. Coco comes over the wall to try to do some damage. Ambition sped up by the Zimmer ultimate, engages. Nagne jumps right into the Cataclysm. There's a Solar Flare going down, doesn't hit anybody in space now. Connects with the Morgana ultimate. There's a Zonius by someday to stay alive out of that one. Doesn't save him though. Double kill comes in for Maokai and Nagne and Arrow on the run now. The only survivors in this fight. Space, just again, great positioning. Whoa, that was close. Space with great positioning. Able to get a lot done there, helping Shy pick up a couple of those kills. But uh, Ambition, how about that? Great engage by him as well, using the speed from that Sivirald. Meanwhile, a fight going on here. Arrow just tangling with Shy, but here comes Ambition to spoil the 1v2. And Arrow's in a lot of trouble. There's a kill for CJ yet again. Meanwhile, that inhibitor goes down. And CJ just really running away with this one. About 8,000 gold ahead now. Shy is so good in these team fights. Yes, yeah. he is. Ever since we saw that first teleport in the dragon fight that KT couldn't decide if they wanted to engage or not, he's been all over this back line. Yeah. Doing so much work. And now fourth dragon for CJ. And it looks like they're going to surprisingly take this one home after really struggling in the laning phase. Well, it's kind of like CJ was sort of giving KT a chance almost, and then once they started being a bit indecisive, CJ was like, oh, okay, let's just let's just decide this one for you. We're just going to win this game. <laughs> also, Score has made some good decisions in terms of where to be on Jungle Nunu, but his team fighting on Nunu has not been good. Yeah. He really hasn't done very much at all with his ultimate or been positioned properly in order to use it so far. Mad Life popping Talisman there to kind of get an eye on what was going on, I suppose. His teammates weren't really around to engage if he would have. Looking for a 
position on Baron right now. KT is trying to control that as best they can. Maybe yeah. they can steal away a blue buff right here. Well, CJ just muscles KT out of there. I mean, they get the Rift Scuttler, so at least KT's got some vision that CJ can't clear right now, but they're gonna clear pretty much everything else, and now Super Minion's already doing damage. KT has to send somebody back. I think they're just gonna lose one of their Nexus turrets here. Meanwhile, CJ, they're gonna start Baron. Wow. Well, I don't know about that. Look at that. The Nexus well, turret just got killed. Yeah, they can this keep just over, I guess. This. I don't know. So there's not much KT can do unless they want to all in on this Baron, but CJ yep. not exactly doing it quickly. Dark binding under ambition and uh, Mad Life oh, chasing God. people away with that Tibber. His arrow in the middle of everything. Mixer getting blown up. Both supports down already, and now Shy getting into the back lines here. Meanwhile, Coco really low healthier space, still trying to find an opportunity. There we go, now doing a lot of damage. Nagne flashes, there's the Cataclysm Ambition catching him out. Arcane Shift gets him away though, space with a nice spell shield under that Morgana binding. Dodges out, gets cleansed as well. Space still alive, I can't believe it. Meanwhile, the second Nexus turret has gone down and Coco gets a double kill. Flash in for Shy, oh, whoops, someday. And just pick up a kill there. Now Nagne and Ambition, the battle going on. Jarvin chasing Ezreal. I think Ambition's going to have to let that one go. But Super Minion's already pounding away at the Nexus right now. And only Nagne and Fix are alive. It's a bit odd. Space is going to come in and kill the Nexus, I guess. Yeah, Space is like, all right, come on. Is your stun done yet? There we go. GG and CJ. They come back with some solid team fighting, some solid decision making. And they'll win a pretty quick game one. Shocking that they actually won that in only 35 minutes, considering what had happened. Yeah, it was at so so one-sided for KD, and then became so one-sided for CJ at the end. That was that was an ugly one. Yeah, really surprising that KT, their side lanes doing so well, and them not being able to close out that game or showcase the right kind of team fighting or decision making because yeah. typically their strengths have been the opposite of that—that that they do have de decently good team fighting and decision making in the mid game, but fall too far behind early to have it matter. So that was, a, that was not the KT I expected to see tonight, that's for sure. Very odd, I mean, uh, KT looking like the team that just flew across the world, not CJ. CJ takes that win in game one, and it is a best